How's it going everybody? Today I wanted to take a minute and break down a few of the frames from the latest short film I shot called Dawn. The short film is thriller based so a lot of the scenes were at night uh, so I'm just going to be breaking down the lighting setups we had for each scene, what we adjusted for different shots during the scene, and how it was all set up. So this first setup we have you can see we're looking through the windshield of a truck. The camera is actually positioned in the bed of the truck in the back looking through, we opened the rear window and looked through the windshield through the truck itself in order to get a wide enough shot so you could feel the edges of the truck on either side as well as on top and on the bottom there. You can see we have our protagonist here just in the middle ready to knock at the door and then a little practical uh, is the only light you can actually see in frame. This was shot I believe on a 25 millimeter. We were shooting on Cook Anamorphics with a, a red Komodo as our actual camera. So jumping into the lighting setup you can see the car headlights. We just left those on throughout the duration of the scene and the beginning of the scene if you watch the short film you'll know that our main character actually gets out of the car and walks up to the front door. As you can see in the actual frame itself here, he's standing at the front door. And that's really where you're going to see like all this sheen that's happening on the reflection of the actual cabin slash house here. Just because that is metal, you can see a lot of reflection. And it also acts as a tungsten source. We had an older truck, so the actual bulbs in the car itself were actually quite nice and flattering light as far as light quality goes. It's not those new modern LED lights that you see on most cars these days. So zooming out here, I'll show you the first little bit of setup we had. This is obviously the cabin. We have our male lead actor here. And then obviously that, that tungsten bulb that you can see here as well, just shining down and, and really reflecting a little bit on his face. And this will play more when we dive in and I'll show you a, a frame of this shot where you can see the coverage that happens when the guy comes and answers the door. We'll, I'll show you that later on. But for now, this is the only light that you can actually see in the frame, of course. And zooming out from that even further, you can see this entire lighting setup here. And let's walk through what we've got going on here. Essentially what I did in this scene to create a big moonlight feel and wash and just to generally bring up the ambience because it is a night scene. You want to make it feel as natural as you possibly can, which to the eye looks really dark, but you need the camera to be able to see what's happening in the scene. So I wanted to emulate a little bit of moonlight, have kind of a soft source, even though moonlight generally is hard, it, it just looks nicer on the face, but having a cool soft source just kind of spill in. And you can really see that sort of shining on the edges of the cabin here, um, a little bit on the steering wheel down here, and then again, just kind of filling in all this space where you're seeing the whole main character and the action happen. And we do live on this shot for quite a while in the actual short. We just kind of let it breathe as it's one of the opening shots of the film before we dive into the over the shoulder coverage that you'd see in any standard thing. But yeah, this is kind of just lighting the whole entire scene generally up. As far as fixtures go for this, Obviously with short films, generally you don't have unlimited budget. So we were working within the constraints of what we had budgetary wise. So we had Aperture Nova 300C, courtesy of my friend Bodan, shout out to Bodan. Uh, he lent us that for the entire weekend. And then we had a fake RE sky panel. It wasn't even a real one. Anyway, we had both of those blasting into a big 12 by 12 ultra bounce that we had just set up in the forest. And then we created a book like with it. So we had a, on the other side of the lights, we had a big 12 by 12 quarter grid here. And that just really sort of softens the light up and makes it feel less sourcey per se. You'll see in a frame that I'm going to show later on the video where we did this, a similar setup, but without book lighting it. And we did that setup first in, in terms of how we shot chronologically and I wasn't as happy with the results. So when we bumped to this scene later on in the shoot, even though it's the beginning of the movie, I decided to make it a book light just to make the light a little more flattering and, and feel like the roll off was a little more natural. In addition to those two sources and the actual book light fixture that you see here, um, I did add a couple 4x4 floppies and that was just to help prevent the spill of the light washing onto the forest behind us. Because when we do jump in for the coverage, looking over the shoulder and, and you see in the background, you'll see the forest, the light spilled in there. So we just wanted to prevent that and have it fall to, to darkness, which was more realistic as far as like what the image actually looked like to the eye. So this is the frame where we jump into the coverage. Um, I'm just showing one side of the coverage because this is frankly the better shot in my opinion of the two. Obviously we shot two, which you can see. I'll link the full short film and as well as the teaser down below if you do want to watch the whole thing. And, and get sort of a whole analysis of what everything looked like. But just breaking this down again, you can see again that tungsten light coming from the truck on the edge of the thing there and then on the side of his face just kind of wrapping around. 
And then obviously the moonlight spilling in here, coming from that 12 by 12 book light ultra bounce. And what happened was before we had put up those floppies on the side, the sort of forest you can see here was washed with a bunch of light. It was just like unnatural. Like there was no motivation for that light source. Uh, and it was just way too overexposed for sort of the, the feel of how we wanted this to feel. It's really dark. This is a, a dark thriller film. So we really wanted to lean into that like crushed look. And again, for our second actor here, just the, the trap light sort of spilling in and, and filling in his face, just giving you a little bit edge to feel his presence uh, in the frame there. Jumping back to the lighting diagram here, one thing I did add when we did jump in for coverage there is a little four by four floppy bounce just to fill in his face a little bit and get the 12 by book light to sort of bounce back into his face just with this little four by four floppy here. Jumping into the second frame here, we have this wide two shot here where you can see both the characters sitting in a truck again at nighttime. Um, obviously lighting an interior of a truck is kind of difficult when you don't have something like a process trailer where you can put lights on the outside and where the actors are actually driving. So you don't want to distract them with too many lights so they can actually continue to drive without it being a safety issue, but also mounting lights where they're hidden from camera and inside the small cabin can provide quite a challenge. So as you can see here, we have two male leads sitting in the truck. This is obviously a beautiful uh, drawing that I spent a lot of time on and looks really great. But again, we had the red Komodo uh, mounted on the hood of the car in this case. We had just a suction hood cut mount and just pointing right, right through the windshield there. And then lighting wise, in the interior of the truck, we had a small aperture fixture just sitting kind of on the dash and, and right below the frame of where the camera could see under the dash of the truck. And that just kind of front lit both of the characters. Again, with limited space, you got to use really small fixtures. And then to diffuse that even further than, than what was built into that fixture, I actually took a shower curtain and just kind of crumpled that up and put it on top of the uh, little LED panel to diffuse that light as much as possible. And what that fixture is doing is really kind of creating this sort of orange tungsten-y feel on both of the actor spaces here and and that's what's creating most of the ambience that you see in this truck um it, it lets you see sort of the seat in the middle and the ceiling as well all that orange tungsteny feel and generally that is the fixture that's lighting their faces jumping back to the diagram we added another small led fixture and aperture mc light here just set to red here to feel as kind of a natural backlight uh, as if the truck was braking, if it was going downhill. And that just really sort of provides, as we jump back to the frame here, a nice edge on both of our actors. You can see the sort of the sheen on the back of the headrest here on either side, and then again on the shoulder and on the face over here. And that also helps just provide a little bit of color contrast and then the nice little edge for when we jump into the coverage over the shoulder again on either side. Zooming out here again, the final touch that we did add just to bring up the ambience of it and also have sort of the forest environment surrounding. Being able to read that on camera, we did add another actual fixture inside of a truck that was driving in front of the truck that, that our talent was in. And what we did in that was just, again, a simple back to the basics book light. In the tailgate of the truck, we just dropped the tailgate and then, then in the bed of the truck, we had placed the uh, Aperture Nova P300C set to a cooler light again to just emulate that moonlight. And then because we were in the size constraints of a bed of a truck, we had a, a four by four ultra bounce and then a 4x4 250 half diffusion. And then as the trucks drove, we tried to keep pace between them uh, to sort of make sure that that ambient light that was just filling in there was consistent and kept the levels of that as consistent as we possibly could. And what that does, if we jump back into the frame here, is just sort of lift all the edges of everything. You can see on the mirror of the truck here, and sort of makes you just feel every single little element. You can see cracks in the windshield here. Um, and, and also lifts everything on both of our talents' faces here. Jumping into the coverage, again, we're gonna focus on our protagonist here. You can see everything I just talked about in the shot. You can see, again, the little red backlight that's sort of spilling into his face here. Just a tiny bit of edge, you can see that coming through on our secondary character. And then you have the mixture of that small LED panel mixed with the four x four book light that's coming in from the other truck in front of us here. And that's just filling in both of their faces. There are frames, this one doesn't have it, where you can see a little bit of tree action happening outside of the window. Trees that come through in different frames as the as the truck is moving and going by. In this scene, we do actually see a little bit of an eye light coming from that mini LED panel that's just mounted in the dash. It just sort of makes a pop in his eye and gives that deathly look that he's that he's giving 
to the other character just sort of emphasizes that and lets lets that talent act, really act with his eyes. Just like how lighting can improve your filmmaking and the projects you're working on, there are a bunch of other ways to elevate your projects to the next level, which is why this video is sponsored by Artlist. If you don't already know, Artlist.io is a platform where you can get stock videos, stock music, and a bunch of digital graphics and assets all in one place. If you've seen the teaser for the short film that we're talking about today and listened to any of the sound effects or the music that was happening in the background, it's all courtesy of Artlist. They have tens of thousands of royalty-free songs that you can download and use on any project, whether it's a commercial paid thing for the biggest brands in the world or something creative like a short film. I've made videos about Artlist, ArtGrid, and Motion Array, their motion graphics platform, all in the past. I'll leave links to all three of those videos down below, breaking down the different platforms. But if you're interested in just getting all three, you can get their newest subscription plan, which is called Artlist Max. Starting at only $29.99 a month, you can get access to every single type of asset Artlist provides. Stock footage, stock music, sound effects, motion graphics, pretty much anything you could think of or ever need when you're editing a video comes in this single subscription. It's awesome. I've been using Artlist long before they decided to sponsor any of my videos, and I was actually paying for the subscription out of pocket because I actually really enjoyed using the service. If you want to try it out for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get two months free. It lets you try out the platform risk-free. You can just download as many assets as you want within that two months. And the best part is the license lasts a lifetime. So even if you cancel your subscription after that two months or after three years, any assets you've downloaded and used in projects prior are completely safe with a royalty-free license. Thank you so much to Artlist for sponsoring this video and makes videos like this possible, so go show them some love by clicking the link in the description. And now back to the lighting setups. Jumping into our third and final setup here, we're gonna start on the tighter shot. This is actually one of my favorite frames of the movie. Again, if you haven't seen it, I'll link the whole 10 minute short film down in the description. For some reason, this, this shot and this frame just really looks nice to me. Lighting-wise, we've got some similarities to what we've seen in our couple other setups but we'll jump into the lighting diagram and i'll show you how we did it so starting off once again we have our red komodo and the cook at morphix as well as a truck in the background of the frame here uh with both of the tail lights in this case playing uh shooting a little red backlight onto our talent now in this tighter frame you can't see the truck or the tail lights playing quite as much you can see a little bit sort of under his chin here and then again on the edge of his nose over here uh, that red sort of coming through, but that's really going to play more as a backlight for the wider shot, which I will show you in a minute. Jumping back into the lighting diagram, we have both of our talents sitting in front of the camera, and then one of them obviously with a headlamp. This was just something that we didn't really have a plan for, which I kind of wish we did, but we just knew on set that the talent needed to have a headlamp in order for the reveal that happens in the scene to work. So we just threw a headlamp that actually was mine on the day uh, on talent's head because we didn't prepare for that. But that just sits on it on the top of his face here and lights up our supporting actor talent arguably more than you would want i actually kind of like how this really blows out and blooms uh the kirk anamorphic lenses just really make this feel like not overly done to me it, it feels like tasteful and sort of harsh and because of the nature of this scene that that sort of works in my opinion um even though that wasn't planned at all and what that also does is it bounces off of our supporting actor's face and and back into the main character's face which is really help helping sort of bring up the, the levels and, and lift his face and create that nice little shape that you see on the edge of his face here. Jumping back into the lighting diagram and zooming out once again, I'll talk you through the other sort of setup we had that's creating the backlight in this scenario. This is what I was talking about in the first frame where we didn't set up a book light for this one, uh, but we did actually double diffuse it. So in this case, we needed more output than we had for a single fixture. So we ran a Aperture 300D Mark II, the Aperture Nova P300C, as well as another 300D Mark I that we had on hand, just to blast as much light as possible in there and also create as much distance as we could between the talent and the source to make it sort of feel more distant like a moonlight source naturally would. This setup has all three lights blasting through a 4x4 opal frame and then into the same 12x12 ultra bounce that we had in the first frame setup. Jumping back into the frame here we can see that that just a helps fill in a little bit of the ground here to make you feel where they are in the space and as well as you can see a little bit in the tree here in the background that's a little out of focus and mostly is acting as sort of a backlight edge light that just kind of fills in the side of his face and then as well fills in our secondary talents edge and face here jumping into the wider version of this frame we can see everything we just chatted about 
We have both of the red taillights now playing in frame as practicals, and you can really see how that makes a bigger difference here in terms of the edge of his face here, a little bit of red edge coming through, as well as on the lower beard here, and then a little bit in his face here as well. In this wider frame, obviously the big moonlight source plays a lot more, lighting up all the aspects of the truck here that you can see, and again, all the trees and sort of greenery that surround it. There's always a balance between wanting to see the environment and also letting things fall to black, and that's sort of a tricky thing to balance. A, when you don't necessarily have the sources to light up the entire thing, we didn't have a big condor with some M90s to blast through all the trees kind of thing, but also just to lean into the grunge of it and making it sort of feel darker and blacker in in the background and, and sort of leaning into that because of that is the vibe of, of the short film. On our supporting actor, I did kind of let the backside of him fall to black, which feels very on brand for sort of the darkness his character is feeling in this scene. And then once again, we have just the headlight playing on his face and acting as a bounce back on our main talent's face here. And if we jump back to the tighter frame, we can see how the big 12 by light source bouncing off of the truck is providing a little bit of an eye light on our main talent here, just kind of bringing his eyes out and showing that craziness that he's feeling in the moment of this scene. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video informational and helpful. I'll link again the teaser and the whole short film in the description down below if you haven't seen them already. I tried to avoid using any super spoilery frames here in this version. If you want a version two of this, perhaps I could break down a few other lighting frames uh, that go into spoilers of the short film once you've all watched it. I really enjoyed shooting this short film. It was a super fun creative project and Doing these lighting breakdowns are something that I really nerd out about. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button because it actually makes a difference and shares this video with other people who might be interested in looking at different lighting setups for a thriller short film. Also subscribe if you want to see more filmmaking videos just like this one. I'll be doing more cinematography breakdowns for commercials, music videos, other short films, etc, etc. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.